Hey, I thought I'd make a quick video just to say a few things about two inch props and to explain exactly how and when I attach them using dental floss instead of screws. That's something I've gotten a handful of questions about. It's actually really easy, uh, but there are a few tricks that I picked up along the way and maybe that'll help you out. I'll be showing it on this build. Uh, this is the design that I called the Shutterbug 85. Uh, you may have seen this. If you haven't, I suggest you check out the other videos on my channel. Uh, I love this build. It's my favorite for backyard freestyle and that sort of thing. And I know a lot of other people have been building these recently too. The popularity is really taken off, uh, which is pretty fun. So let's get into it. So basically the issue is that two inch props have traditionally uh, been designed with uh, these two holes right next to the center shaft. And that's because they expect you to screw it into the bell of the motor. And you can see an example of that on the 85X. The motors have these little holes on top so the screws can go through there. You can see two of those screws like that. That's how two inch props uh, traditionally have been done. Uh, but my build uses these Beta FPV 1103 motors and you can see there's nowhere for those screws to go. That's actually something really cool about this motor. Uh, having the open bell like that makes it a lot lighter. And that's because this was designed for the 75X um, as far as I know, this was the first 1103 size motor that was designed exclusively for push-on props. Uh, and that works great on the 75X because the props are designed as push-on props, uh, which means they have the right amount of tension on the shaft. These props are not designed as push-on props, so uh, they're a little bit loose in the center. They expect you to screw it in. Now those screws would of course be important uh, if you had heavier props uh, and especially if you had exposed props like this build. Uh, this is one I built recently. This actually has the 85X motors in it as well. Uh, they work great on two and a half inch props like this. Um, but uh, even if you could fly without the screws, what would happen is as soon as you tapped anything, the props would you know pop off and they'd pop off spinning really fast. So they can actually go quite a ways. They're really hard to find. Uh, props that come off that way. Um, so you would need screws for a build like this, I think. Um, but on a build with a whoop style frame, it's actually a lot less important. You can bounce into things and not touch the prop at all. Uh, but these props can still pop off in a crash if you don't do anything. Um, but all you need to prevent that is a little bit more tension between the shaft and the prop, and that's where the floss comes in. Now there are many different kinds of floss out there. This one happens to be Glide Pro Health Comfort Plus floss, uh, but I don't think that really matters. Um, I think you could use whatever you have as long as it has this kind of flat shape to it. It's not rounded. So you break off a piece and the first thing to do is to put it through the hole starting from the top of the prop and it can be kind of awkward to get in there. And so I find that it helps if you spin it with your finger to make this fine point, it's kind of like a needle. There we go. Now at this point, you could actually push this down onto the drone uh, and then try to trim. But trimming the underside uh, with these ducts here is really hard to do. And I worry about floss getting down into the motor. You wouldn't want that. So what I'm actually gonna do uh, is take this and feed it back through the hole towards the top side again. Like that. Start pulling it through. Now as I pull it, the loop will get smaller and smaller. And I can do it until there's just a tiny loop. And then I'm gonna push that loop kinda of to the side with my finger to make a space. It's hard to see, uh, but there's a space in the shaft next to it. Now we're ready to push it on. And once you get it started, you can kind of hold the motor with one finger and kind of twist and push it down like that. Now all that remains is to trim the top side and the top side is easy to get to. For trimming the floss, you could use a sharp knife or a sharp pair of scissors. I like to use these little scissors on my pocket knife, but if you just try to cut floss, um, you'll find that the floss tends to kind of bend through the scissors and it's kind of hard to cut. The way to make this way easier and to get a cut right next to the base is to hold it tight with one finger and instead of snipping with the scissors, just kind of slice through it. There we go like that. At this point, the prop is really very secure. Um, I have never had a prop come off when the floss is in there like that. And I have had some really hard crashes. 
Now the props that I'm using here are the Emacs Avon 2 inch 4 blade props. I really like these props, they're super durable. Um, and they've got a lot of pitch and they're four blade. Uh, so you would think that would be a lot of load on the motors, uh, but they're only two inch props. And what I like is that they produce so much thrust. Not only do you have a lot of power in cornering and that kind of stuff, uh, but they don't need really high RPMs um, to hover and fly around. And that's important to me because if you're going to fly a build like this in your neighborhood or around people, uh, you want it to sound uh, unintimidating. You want it to be quiet. Um, and that's what this does. The props that spin at a lot higher RPM uh, end up making more of a scream, and this makes more of a lower pitch sound. It kind of whooshes its way through the space. Um, and for a 2S whoop, I think that's an important quality. I do have some other props that I can show you though. This is the Emacs Avon uh, Blur three blade prop, Gem Fan uh, 2035 four blade, Gem Print 2040, Tri-Blade, and uh, this is the Cyclone 2035, I think. And I've used all of these props. Um, they work okay, except for this one. Unfortunately, um, I've been really disappointed in this Cyclone prop. I've had a great experience with Dow Cyclone props on the larger sizes, like the 5050s I use for racing, and they're fantastic. Um, but I don't know if the balance is wrong on these or something, but I've tried uh, three or four different sets, and I always get Jello in my video feed. Um, so I can't recommend these, unfortunately. Uh, these other ones seem to work better, although the Gem Fan uh, four blades are super, super flimsy. Um, that probably gives them a better response time. Um, but uh, the way I move through the air, sometimes you can even hear the flex of these props, and I don't like that uh, so much. And if you want three blades, uh, of course, these are options there as well. But I just keep coming back uh, to these props for the reasons that I mentioned. Here are the weights of these different props. You're welcome to pause the video uh, if that's helpful to you. Now, having to use dental floss obviously isn't ideal, but I wouldn't really want to use the screws on a build that's this light anyway. Here's an example of what one of those screws typically looks like. And if we dump them in here, you can see a set of eight of them is uh, like two grams just for the screw. So that's going to add two grams to the all up weight. Um, but it's actually more significant than that because you're adding half a gram to each uh, propeller. And for some of these propellers, that's almost as much as the propeller weighs by itself. Now, it's not so bad because the weight is right in here close to the axle, but that's still extra weight that the motor has to speed up and slow down. Um, and you'd get better response time the lighter that can be. Now, like I said, some builds really do need the screws. Um, and your build might be like that. Or you might decide that you just really like to have screws um, to have that extra security. And if your motor is supported, that's a choice that you can make. Um, so I just want to point out there is another option for screws. These are little titanium button head screws. And if I drop these in the scale, um, you'll see uh, there is a significant weight savings if you can find a screws like this. Titanium M2 screws like this don't have to be expensive, but sometimes they are. Um, I got these a while ago on a sale. If I can find a reasonable deal, I'll leave a link in the description down below. I've already made a handful of builds this way. Uh, these ones are standard definition with different canopies. This one's HD. And the one I was showing today actually isn't even for me. Uh, this one is for Jeff. And Jeff is a guy who was in a car accident last year. Uh, he woke up three months later, went through tons of surgeries, and now spends most of his time in a hospital-style bed. Uh, and that's pretty rough. But the cool thing I wanted to share is that from his bed, he discovered this hobby of FPV. Uh, and he's really excited about it, and I think that is pretty cool. I think it's cool that this hobby can give a new sense of freedom to someone in his situation. And maybe you know someone who could also really enjoy uh, the freedom of flight through FPV. And if so, I'd encourage you to share the love. Uh, I hope this information is helpful for you. If it is, don't forget to subscribe. And stick around, I got more content coming, uh, including uh, finally wrapping up the performance data for these batteries, the GNB, uh, TBS, and Beta FPV 2S batteries. Uh, so stay tuned for that, uh, should be done fairly soon. Happy flying.